Welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. I've been asked to make a video about one of the buildings. It's the hotel right here. What's special about it is that it gives you keys to check into rooms, and you can only check into the room that you have your key for. It has been a very long time since I've made a video. A very, very long time. So this is going to be a bit messy as I relearn how to make videos. Let's get started with the user experience. You enter the hotel. It looks like an okay hotel. There's rooms up above, and there's a check-in desk at the bottom. If you don't want to grab your key and you just try to run up here to the door, you'll find us an iron door. And there's no switches or buttons or anything to get it open. You need a key and you'll notice that there are four doors. Each one requires a different key. So we have to go to the check-in desk and get a key. Luckily the check-in desk is just downstairs so we can get a key to pop in the little lock barrel down here. The first thing you do is press a button to get your key and you have a key. There it is, room number four. So I come over to room number four. I put the key in the barrel down below. Now the magic happens and the door opens. I can go in, I get the key back, I can sleep in the bed. There's a crafting table here to do some work. I can come out and look at all of Hedgehog Hollow from the balcony. When I'm ready to leave, the pressure plate by the door makes it easy to get out. I can keep this key and use the room as long as I want, but when I'm done with it, I put it back in the key return so somebody else can use the room later. You've seen how it works with one key so far, but now I can show you what makes this hotel special. There are four rooms with four separate keys. I press the button again and I get a new key. This time it's room number one. If I try to use it on room number four, it doesn't work. I get the key and I put it in the barrel but the door doesn't open. It turns out the key is just sitting there in the barrel. It doesn't unlock anything. I have to take it to room number one. So I put it in room number one's barrel and the door opens and lets me in. And just like before, I get the key back when I come in the room. I can enjoy the scenery, spend time in this room. And when I'm done, I head out, door opens up, I can go down and put the key back in the key return because I'm done with this room. Did you notice though, as I was doing that, that there is no visible redstone here? Look how thin this is. It's just one block tall. Well, technically one and a half because there's a half slab down there. On top, you didn't see any redstone either. There's nothing in front of the walls, nothing behind the walls. Remember in the room, it was just carpet on the floor. I spent a long time trying to make this thing as thin as it is, so let me show you exactly what I did. This is a creative world so that I can show you step by step how I built the mechanisms inside the hotel. This is the same setup, just with everything of the hotel removed. I press a button, I get a key. I can put the key back in the key return. You can see it's in here. If I press the button, I get the key back again. I can take it over to the door. I put it in the barrel. And then the door opens. When I go in, I get the key back. This is all of the redstone that made that hotel work. All the components are the same and you can kind of see how small everything is. But what's important is how thin the door circuit is. The circuit is really only one block tall. These half slabs, and there's not many of them, are just needed because some components have to be resting on top of something. Let's start with the check-in desk. This is everything that you will need. You need the anvil to rename your keys. I use tripwire hooks, and then I rename them to room 1, room 2, room 3, room 4. You can do whatever you want. The unique name ensures that players can't throw just any old block in there and open up the door. When you're done, just get rid of that anvil. These are all of the components you're going to need to build the check-in desk. Obviously, you'll put more decorations around to make it look like a check-in desk. I start by putting down a gold block, and then I put a note block on top of it. This is just so it makes that ding when you get your key. Now I need any solid block, it doesn't matter what it is, and with a button on top of it, that is going to trigger the ding and make it so the dropper shoots the key up. Next, I'm going to place the dropper, and this is a dropper, not a dispenser, though I think a dispenser might work. It goes facing upward and shoots the key straight up. 
Then I'm going to take a hopper and put it into the dropper. That is the key return. When you put your key into the hopper, it goes right back into the dropper. Just find a key to put into the system, and then it's all ready to go and be tested. Press a button, you get your key. Put the key into the hopper, it goes back into the dropper. The only difference between this and the one in the hotel is that inside the dropper I had four different keys, one for each room. And when you press it, you get a random key instead of always the exact same key out of the system. Now let's look at how I made the door mechanism. This is everything you will need. Some solid blocks of any kind, and then some slabs of any kind. You need a door. I use an iron door here so people can't just open it. You need a barrel, that's where you put your key in, a sign to indicate the room number, and a pressure plate to put inside the door. For the redstone, you need four hoppers, two comparators, two repeaters, two redstone, a sticky piston, and a dropper. This is a little platform just to get started. Let me get a frame and get a door down. Again, I'm using an iron door so that people can't open it without using the mechanism. Next, I'm going to place a hopper facing into the room, which is going to be under the wall. I need one block over here next to the hopper. After I place the hopper pointing into the room, I put 22 keys into it. I put 18 in the first slot and then one in each other slot. That keeps only keys from going into that hopper. Now I can place a barrel on top of the hopper. and then finish the wall around the door. Don't forget to place a sign that tells the users which key goes to which door. Now you can get rid of an extra block back here and you can see that that hopper is pointed into the room. That's very important. And this is where the dropper goes. Let's go ahead and put it in right now. It's going to point upward into the room. And next we take two hoppers and point them into the dropper. Let me show you a mistake that I repeatedly made. This next hopper I kept pointing it into this block here, and this isn't going to work. It's supposed to be pointed into that back hopper, just like this. This gives the keys a path into the dropper. I just have to make this dropper I put in last slide back and forth so it can pull keys from under that barrel. For that, I need a sticky piston. Let's get some blocks just temporarily so we can place the sticky piston and then put it in place so it can push that hopper. Get rid of the temporary block. And now we need to have a comparator take a signal off of that hopper. It's coming through this block right here. But see, there's the hopper. In order to do this, we're going to need half slabs. So let's throw a few of them down. We need one here, one here, and one here. The rest were temporary just to get this put in place. We can put the solid block back where it was and get the comparator. It's going to pull the signal through that block. You can see it's already lit up. Let's get some redstone, need two of them. And we're going to connect that to the sticky piston. I just want to note that that last step may not work in Java. Adding just one more key will have enough power to fire the piston, pushing the hopper. So it's going to pull that one key and send it through one of these other two hoppers into the dropper. When the dropper has a key, we want to open the door. So we need a comparator that's going to send a signal that gets around under the door and forces it to open. To do that, we need slabs so we have something to put the comparator and a couple repeaters on. You're going to need one here, here, and here. You can get rid of the middle one that was just temporary. Get rid of this block and then add some blocks. I use blocks here because they're solid and it mostly keeps your floor from being full of holes. I took the blocks out just so I could show you exactly where to put the components. You're going to put a comparator here and then you're going to put a repeater here and a repeater here and I'll put those solid blocks right back in where they were. When the keys are the dropper, this will go and open the door for you. 
the pressure plate goes between the door and the dropper. It opens the door and makes the key pop out of the dropper. Now we can test it. Just make sure that I have a room key in my inventory. Yes, I do. So I put the room key inside the barrel and then the door will open and let me in. And after I go in, it pops out of the floor and goes right back into my inventory. And the pressure plate lets me walk right back out the door. So that's the hotel door that I've been asked to make a tutorial for. I hope this is informative and will help you in other designs. Until next time, goodbye from Hedgehog Hollow.